Arvind Paranjpe, what's the kind of feedback that you're getting, the interest that you're seeing amongst everyone flocking to uh, the Nehru Planetarium and elsewhere? It just seems in our newsroom and elsewhere, no matter what else is happening in Indian politics, everyone is tracking the Chandrayaan journey stories and the Chandrayaan flying off chart beat where you can see how much interest there is, who's reading what on digital or on YouTube or watching on TV. It's Chandrayaan 3, which is the number one story. Absolutely, it is a number one story, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, when the launch took place, uh, we had uh, arranged for public viewing and people were assembled together and whosoever came to our planetarium for that day's show, it was raining quite heavy in Mumbai and everybody clapped and you know, it was a some kind of a celebration without even preparing for it, so it was that. And um, as the visitor will come to the planetarium, they have this standing question about whatever, as you were asking other experts here, that uh, what about Chandrayaan, whether it will land, and then people are hopeful. People actually, why hopeful? I would say people do believe that this time we are successfully going to land on the surface of the moon. And then they have associated question people generally ask. And one of the question which has been also asked as a science versus God, and that is the uh, before the uh, um, launch took place, uh, the IROL uh, Ch Ch Chandrayaan model was taken to Tirupati and so on and so forth. So answer to that our question is that, uh, well, scientists and uh, technical te engineers and all that they do believe in pure science and all that, but af after all, there is some kind of a human faith involved in it. Many astronauts have been going into the space with, like we know, Sunita William carried Gita with her and so on and so forth. And therefore, we had to tell them that, look, there are some people who believe in it. But as a pure scientist, when it comes to uh, landing or, see, I mean, even talking about the space mission itself, it's a very much scientific. Uh, there is no muhurt, the way we understand muhurt in our Indian context. But then the people do take out the numbers based on the positions of the moon, sun, and other planets. That is the gravity part of it. And then why this at this particular time in the year that we have sent it, that is because the moon has come slightly closer to Earth. I mean, in its orbit is always elliptical, as you have said right in the, right in the beginning in your promos. So it comes slightly closer, so that saves fuel. And related questions people ask, and uh, we also uh, plan to uh, see that uh, people uh, understand everything. Probably, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, why is the Indian mission taking so much longer than the Russian mission? Oh. It isn't a race, of course, but you know, it's yeah. uh, generating a lot of chatter that the Russians took off after us with their Luna. Somehow, they, they might get there one day before us, and people are wondering what's going on. They start late and they get there earlier. So, what is it that the Chandrayaan is doing which is making it take more time? So it's a very good question, and I have been asked this too. So um, basically, the Russian launch vehicle, I think Soyuz, or a version of Soyuz, is much more powerful than um, than the GSLV that has been used. See, the GSLV can carry maybe, I don't know, 5,000 or 7,000 kgs to low Earth orbit. I don't know what the Soyuz capacity is, but it is more. And if you think of the Apollo 11, they reached the moon in four days. So that was carried by the Saturn V. The capacity to low Earth orbit was probably 1,50,000 kg, so 30 times more than GSLV. What Elon Musk is building is 2,50,000 kg, which is wow. 50 times more powerful than GSLV. So it is to do with how much, how powerful the launch vehicle is that you know, you're going to go slower or faster. And if you go slower, which is absolutely valid, you, you just do m many more orbits, and so that that takes a little more time, and it's just a slower velocity. But so long you get there, it's a valid way to get there. Dr. Prishu Kumar, do we have something in the works which is stronger, bigger, faster than the GSLV launch site satellite launch vehicle? Dr. Shri Kumar, can you hear me? Yes, sorry, I didn't hear the question. Would you repeat that? Do, do we have something in the works in India which is bigger, stronger? than the but GSLV satellite launch vehicle? It's, uh, I mean, ISRO is working on the next generation launch vehicles and it takes many years for it to be developed. So we have various, there are various phases of development. Clearly, large lift capacity is essential. 
for future space programs and there is a program underway. Okay. The other interesting thing is that apparently there's going to be a lot of collaboration between Japan and India in the next phase post Chandrayaan 3. Amitabh Ghosh, if you could explain how different countries coming together, especially friends and strategic allies like Japan, could help speed up the pace at which India's missions progress from here and how it also helps Japan. Right. So I'll tell you how this really, how this collaboration really happens. I think there is also some misconceptions. So when a um, country is saying that we'll, we are doing a mission to the moon, they set out uh, um, something called announcement of opportunity. Many countries and many universities all over the world respond. And then the country which is going, they choose the um, instrument that best suits their goals. And this happens for NASA, this happens for everyone. So, so I don't know what the specific Japan collaboration is. So the advantage of this is that, you know, maybe NASA is going and India has a, it contributes a mission. So it overall progresses the science. It, 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 it is increasing the, what we call the science return for the dollar. So it helps everybody. And in this case, if Japan and uh, India collaborate, it will not only, not only help India and Japan, but it will help the whole world because most of the data is usually shared internationally. Okay, let's spend a moment on the probe itself. Once the Chandrayaan lands, this lunar probe that goes out, you can see it on the images there. We're also reading about craters. And uh, the question that comes to my mind, Arvind Paranjpe, is how do we control this? How do we ensure it doesn't get stuck somewhere? Because the surface of the moon obviously very different from the surface of the Earth. How does this get controlled? And how do we ensure we can bring it back and just move it around in the way that we need? No, I think that um, uh, the rover is going to be, it, ha it will be, um, it will have its autonomy. That will, it is autonomous instrumentation, which it can be controlled from the uh, um, station on the Earth via um, either orbiter or the um, uh, propulsion uh, um, and uh, through radio communication. But I think it will take, take some decision on its own. And I think it is going to be moving about a few hundred, uh, so about 100 meters or so. So it will take its own decision. It will decide, but it also, as it moves around, it will take the a uh, lot of observations of the lunar soil, etc., and radiate. Uh, I mean, uh, send it back to us, and that will give us a lot of scientific information. But having said this, I don't think it is going to come back into the thing. I mean, once it is landed on the moon, they are going to be there until someone in future goes and picks them up or something. But it is just going to be there. It is not going to come back or anything like that. Okay. India's number one political reporter. Defines what seems to be happening, vendetta politics. Unmatched eye. Unmatched experience. The world has changed. My black hair has become grey as well. And with unmatched passion for the story. Do not monopolize the conversation. When it's 100% news that matters. It's News Today with Rajdeep Sardesai. Monday to Friday, 9pm. Only on India Today TV. India's number one political reporter. Defines what seems to be happening, vendetta politics. Unmatched eye. Unmatched experience. The world has changed. My black hair has become grey as well. And with unmatched passion for the story. Do not monopolize the conversation. When it's 100% news that matters. It's News Today with Rajdeep Sardesai. Monday to Friday, 9pm. Only on India Today TV. India's number one political reporter. Defines what seems to be happening, vendetta politics. No one is connected Unmatched eye. Unmatched experience. The world has changed. My black hair has become grey as well. And with unmatched passion for the story. Do not monopolize the conversation. When it's 100% news that matters. It's News Today with Rajdeep Sardesai. Monday to Friday, 9pm. Only on India Today TV.